Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, hello, Knife Junkie, and welcome to episode number 129 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. The Knife Junkie Podcast is the place for knife noobs and knife junkies to learn all about knives and knife collecting. It's our midweek supplemental episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast, where we get to go into the weeds a little bit and talk about knives. Uh, Knife Life News, we'll have a couple of stories coming up this week. A new Kaiser, uh, as well as uh, Elijah Isham and Best Tech. That's in our Knife Life News segment. Also, of course, have Bob's State of the Collection. Guess what? Yes, he finally broke down and got the Spartan Harsey folder in. Now, instead of hearing about him talking about it and how much he wants it, we're going to get to hear him talk about it in his hand. Yeah, so that's, that'll be different. Right. that's right. <laughs> how much he likes it. That's right. Also, uh, niche designs. Uh, Bob has some uh, prototypes for them for consideration. Also, the uh, Kiridashi that uh, Bob wants to talk about a little bit. But uh, before we get into some of the the meat of the show, if you will, several things to talk about, Bob. First of all, the epic Thursday Night Knives oh, that yeah. we had this past Thursday, July 9th. Yeah, that was awesome. We had so much fun. So Mike Emler and uh, Jared Neve, uh, two sharpening uh, experts, came on the show. And we were going to talk about all things sharpening and uh, just talk about knives. Two great people in the knife world out there. Uh, Mike Emler out on the West Coast has a company called Crazy Sharp, and uh, he's got this uh, background in Japan, and he learned how to sharpen in Japan, and he's and he just puts a well a crazy edge, crazy on knives. sharp edge. <laughs> and so he came on, and also Jared Neve, um, who just recently sharpened and and did a tip repair on my Emerson Sachs, who learned quite a bit from Mike Emler and Mike Emler's videos. They were both on, and it was great. And then Spirited Blades came on, and then Blade Banter came on, and then Nick Rogers of Niche Designs came on, and then Slicey Dicey, and Alex of Alex's Knife Box, Lavender Pants we finally got to meet, and Nico, Mike Emler's good friend Nico, came on. So we had a huge star-studded cast on Thursday Night Knives, and it was uh, it was a hell of a lot of fun. I mean, it went two and a half hours, or two hours and 20 minutes, and we usually go an hour and a half, so... Yeah, somebody I saw in the YouTube comment said it looked like a Zoom room at one time since we had like, uh, you know, six panels with uh, folks in there. But uh, yeah, that's definitely the fun part is uh, everybody just popping in and, and sharing stuff, you know? Yeah. And the and the other great part is the video aspect. You know, you're only listening to my uh, my silver tongue, you know, through your ears right now. But you could actually be watching and seeing the knives that people are talking about. I mean, that's right. the great part. Alex is like, check out what I got, Bob. And he holds up some beautiful knife and he can put it right up close to his camera. It's almost like watching a knife review video on YouTube, but it's live mm-hmm. and you've got the input of several people and you've got a quick turnover of knives. Lots of people showing lots of knives, you know. Well, yeah, like you said, I mean, uh, Alex specifically came on to show off a knife that was being talked about at that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Slicey Dicey just came on for a couple of minutes just to ask a specific knife sharpening question that related Sorry. to the topic. And uh, then um, Spirited Blades came on because uh, he had like, what, three or four knives he wanted to show off yeah. that were, you know, kind of fitting in with the conversation then, you know, dipped out. So you don't have to come in and stay for the whole time. If you've just got a specific question, you know, a knife that you have that's related to the topic. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. Yeah, yeah. It's like a radio call-in show, actually, if you sure, think about yeah. it. Yeah. But it's modern and it's video. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and and you get all of the uh, all of the joy of seeing these amazing knives. You know, a, a lot of our uh, contributors, uh, let's say Ryan from Spirited Blades or Alex, to so, I mean, they collect knives that are way outside of my realm of desire, but also re- a realm of possibility. There are knives there that I'm just not going to be chasing down and spending that money on. But it's so great to actually see them and get the inside take from people who. Yeah. who really love those models. Well, and especially those guys, since they're, uh, you know, in conversations with the makers and can uh, kind of give that uh, that backstory a little bit about how communications with makers go or, you know, how long the process takes, those kind of things. Some of that inside story kind of stuff is is fascinating to me. Yeah, yeah. And and there's also these epic chats on Instagram mm-hmm. and elsewhere where, where all of these guys, I mean, I, I sort of observe them, but I, I, I rarely jump in. 
And they're they're talking about very specific in the weeds topics about certain knives. And you can really see, you know, if a knife maker could jump in there and be a fly on the wall, they could get so much out of, uh, you know, kind of how to design their next knife from the little little things you hear back and forth from all these uh, aficionados, you know. Well, you know, and uh, one at one point of the show, this uh, Thursday Night Knives that we're talking about, the July 9th episode, if you uh, didn't catch it live, you can catch it on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Uh, Nick Rogers of Niche Designs hopped in because you guys were, were talking about niche designs and the prototypes and the Kickstarter and all that. Mm-hmm. And I, I just thought that was awesome that, that he came in and like, perfect timing and let's talk about this. <laughs> yeah, that was really cool. Not only a, a tip of the hat to you, Jim, for for making the platform so available to everyone, but for him for just jumping on and and talking with us. I mean, he's got three prototypes for his model, the Ingress, going around through the pass around groups and other um, you know uh, online knife people. And uh, you've seen a lot of videos and photographs on Instagram of these knives, and now I have them. And first of all, how cool of Nick to to entrust these valuable prototypes to various people, myself included. Uh, but also, what a great opportunity to get in hand something that is not even, well, it doesn't really exist out there in the wider world. So to have the opportunity to see these three knives and see how they've gone through the changes was great. But to have Nick jump in and talk about his process was very cool. I'm sure we'll hear more about that from the Knife Junkie later, but a 30-second quick overview, quick review, uh, quick thoughts about the uh, the prototypes there, Bob? So I will just talk, uh, I'll talk about the prototypes themselves and the design evolution a little bit later. But right now I'll say these are prototypes from We Knives, uh, We Knife Company. And I just have to say, we can make a knife. I, I mean, these knives are amazing and they aren't even what's being sold. They're not even out on the market. They're just prototypes. But man, they are of incredible quality. Well, thanks to uh, uh, Nick and uh, everybody else that jumped in on Thursday Night Knives, the July 9th episode. And uh, Hopefully, if uh, you haven't joined us yet, or even if you have been on and you want to come back on, uh, obviously, we'd love to have you. Tomorrow night's show, the July 16th show, I don't know how much more epic if that's a word, how much more <laughs> epic it can be. But one thing that is going to be uh, new tomorrow night, it's going to be the first knife giveaway for members of the Knife Junkies Patreon. That's at the Gentleman Junkie level. And uh, Bob, that's coming up Thursday, July 16th, 10 p.m., the first knife drawing. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, The knife is not in my hands yet. It's still uh, on the way. Well, it better get here tomorrow. Yeah, it better. (laughs) Well, it will be here. And uh, um, I don't know, Jim, should we say what the knife is? Well, you know, might as well. Might as well. Well, the first knife giveaway will be a Cold Steel SR1 Tanto uh, lightweight. It's a heavy-duty massive, heavy-duty sort of survival. Well, the SR and SR1 is survival and rescue. It's based on the SRK, the very famous cold steel knife that actually Mike Emler was um, issued when he was in the Navy. Uh, But the SR1 is their folding version of that. They just came out with the lightweight version. So it has has all of the capability, but uh, a, a lot less weight uh, uh, than the original SR1. And I chose the Tanto model because it just looks good. So there you go. We have, uh, we have, what is it? Six people in the gentleman junkie category who are eligible to win this. And so your odds are looking great and, uh, hopefully, well, hopefully you win. Yeah. Well, you know, the drawing is tomorrow, Thursday, July 16th. So if you are not yet in the Knife Junkies Patreon at the Gentleman Junkie level, that's the $10 a month level. Still time for you to get in. I don't know what the, the cutoff is going to be, Bob. Maybe uh, right before the show on Thursday oh, yeah, Night yeah. Knives comes yeah. in, you know, so you still have a chance to uh, to get in and join and uh, decrease the odds for, uh, for other folks that are already there. That's but right, right now, great odds for you to uh, have a chance to win this knife. And Who'd to thunk a cold steel knife, Bob, that you're going <laughs> to give away for the first I, one? I, I, I have to say, Jim, I racked my brain for quite some time as to what to give away. And uh, it just it just kind of I, I, I followed my own desire. I was like, mm. it's, I feel like it's got to be a cold steel, at least on the first one. Right. And uh, and then I was like, what cold steel do I want right now? Well, I think if uh, I think the patri- patrons, patrons or patrons of the Knife Junkie, they kind of know your style and know what you like. Right. So. I think they'll be pleased. I think so, too. 
Yeah. Before we move on to building an axe and knife throwing target, which is, uh, I know, the next topic uh, of conversation, I do want to mention your newsletter that came out this week. If, if you haven't subscribed to the Knife Junkie newsletter, please do so. I am trying to be more regular with it. And Jim this week jumped in on Friday and wrote a newsletter um, kind of kind of as a follow up to the epic Thursday Night Knives the knife the night before. But I really loved getting that letter and I loved getting your perspective, Jim, you know, so I don't know. I think I think it should be as as regular a feature as you would like it to be for you. (laughs) Uh, As regular as you. Yeah. 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 Maybe even more so. So, uh, you know, I'd love to see more of them. So there, I'm putting you on the spot right here. If you'd uh, like to see me do a regular newsletter, I don't know, shoot Bob an email at uh, bob at com or call our listener line at 724-466-4487. Let us know if you have any desire to hear from the Knife Newbie. And even more so, uh, Jim has an unopened box at at his home that contains a knife that I sent him. (laughs) And we've been... We've been uh, bandying back and forth the idea of him doing an uh, an unboxing. If you want to see Jim's unboxing video. But that's video, Bob. I know what that's video. I we, have a face for radio. <laughs> we don't have to see your face. We'd love to. But uh, if you want to see Jim's hands unboxing <laughs> and get his initial reaction uh, of the knife uh, he will be unboxing, send us an email. Give us a call. Let us know. I think uh, we hear a lot from me. And I think people want to hear some from Jim, too. Some more from Jim. Uh, not only on on his take on things, but, you know, well, I guess on on the actual knives themselves, not just the subjects that we bring up. Hmm. All right. Well, don't call, folks. Don't, <laughs> don't email Bob. I, I, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just te- teasing, sort of. But anyway, yeah, uh, I, you know, the newsletter thing sounds kind of interesting. Uh, as you know, I think I've mentioned it once or twice on the podcast before I do. You know, buy and sell stuff on eBay, and uh, I do try to buy knives at auction uh, whenever they come up. A lot of times uh, my advisor, i.e. the knife junkie, uh, you know, says, you know, that that one's not really worth it. You know, that one's, you know, got too much damage to repair, those kind of things. And at the prices they go for on auction, uh, they're already at or more than what I think they could be sold for. So I, I don't wind up getting a lot of them. But I'm constantly bidding. I've got uh, some bids right now on some things. So uh, we'll see. Maybe I can kind of keep folks uh, abreast of uh, what I'm coming across and uh, bidding on and hopefully buying in the future. So we'll we'll see about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, We look forward to it. All right. I'll try to be as regular as Bob. (laughs) I'll just put that out there. Well, you you mentioned it, and I I forgot to tease it in the show opener. We were talking uh, uh, talking about what's coming up. I absolutely forgot to tease the. uh, Building a knife axe throwing target for summer family fun. Now that's a uh, contradiction in words right there. If I've ever heard it, a knife axe throwing target for family fun. For family fun. Yeah, my my wife tasked me uh, earlier in the summer with us uh, staying home a lot. We've been doing a lot around the house, you know, taking care of things that maybe we let uh, we let go. Uh, like we're gonna have the house painted. I haven't had that in a few years. That kind of thing. Um, well, she said, we we got to come up with some things for the girls to do. They can't go to camp this year. There's no camp. So um, they have bows and arrows and stuff like that. They never shoot them. Let's, let's encourage them. Let's get, to, let's build a target. And we kind of mapped out a spot. And so my mind went to work. I was like, here's an opportunity for me to be manly. And, uh, you know, I try to be as manly as I can, but I'm also living in a household with five, uh, four females. One of them happens to be a cat. The rest, uh, are human. And, uh, you know, I end up doing a lot of housework and other kind of stuff. And so I cherish my time outside divining and mowing the lawn and that kind of thing. But I also am a pretty handy guy and I can build stuff. And so when my wife uh, tasked me with building a target, oh, I went to, I went to town, you know, I I did all sorts of research on, on YouTube to check out, uh, because I don't, I don't want this just to be for for bows and arrows shot by youngsters, I want this to be capable of receiving an axe thrown by someone such as myself or a knife thrown by a friend or a real man <laughs> or a real man. <laughs> uh, so sorry. Uh, no, that's quite all right. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I went to Home Depot. Uh, well, at first I designed it all. And uh, oh, of course. And in the designing, Jim, did I you forgot. Use CAD for that or did What's you that? Hand, did you use CAD for uh, that or did you just hand sketch it? That's a that's a Bob DeMarco question. 
I uh, I hand sketched it, and in doing so, forgot that a two by six isn't actually six inches wide. It's five and a half. Everything's like a half inch shorter, and I forgot about that. And uh, and so my design didn't quite come out exactly. So I'm doing a little bit of uh, back designing, like the F4 Phantom. But now I, it's all up there, and it's a uh, two by six panels on a box that I made out of uh, out of two by fours, and it's uh, four by four. And it's heavy as hell. And now it's going to hang on the pull-up bar that I erect in the backyard. So I'm, I'm uh, uh, next week. That's my manly chore for next week. I'm going to be put, uh, cementing two posts in the ground with a with a uh, with a metal bar in between. You know, putting metal pipe in between. And I'm going to start doing pull-ups. And when I'm not doing pull-ups, which will be most of the time, I will have <laughs> a I will have the target that I just built hanging on the. Uh, hanging on the bar with two metal hooks. So it's kind of a, a two in one build and it's a, you know, it's going to be a two in one product. Basically right. you can, you can go out there and do your pull-ups and then shoot bows and arrows and throw axes. So, you know, well, if it's as heavy as you say it is, you'll get your workout putting the thing up on the bar. And <laughs> exactly. It down. I was like, man, why didn't I just get th- thinner panels here, but just get a bale of hay and put a target on, a, on the bale of hay or something. Yeah. But then we wouldn't have all this for me to talk about. Well, that's true. So thank you, girls and wife and pussycat for allowing uh, Bob to be a manly man and uh, building his uh, knife axe throwing target. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to there are a number of people that I follow online uh, who who kind of show how to throw knives. And it's something I've always wanted to do. And I used to throw them at trees when I was a kid, but never had the patience to really figure out how to throw and make the it proper make technique. It yeah. yeah. So Instead of just chucking it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, that'd be interesting. I don't know if you've got any pictures or uh, things you want to document along the way. We can put up on the show notes page, either this episode or uh, future episodes as the build continues. We'll, uh, you know, um, uh, document the progress of the uh, knife axe throwing target. And uh, if anybody has any experience throwing an axe or throwing knives or something like that, definitely love to uh, hear from you. Thoughts and, uh, you know, how to's, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. Call us on the listener line, 724-466-4487. Give Bob a, a quick tip or two, and uh, maybe even uh, we can then get you to come on a Thursday Night Knives or, uh, you know, yeah. one of the midweek podcasts or whatever, just for a quick little interview about uh, knife throwing and uh, axe throwing uh, techniques and, as I said, tips and how-tos and what not to do, which would be something I would need to know what not <laughs> yeah. to do. Because, you know, me, I'd, I'd just grab it and chuck it, but I'm sure <laughs> that's not the right way to do it. So. Cool. All right. Uh, show notes again for all this episode. All is going to be at the slash 129, the slash 129. We'll have links to uh, pretty much uh, all the stuff we talk about, as well as uh, the Knife Life news stories that we're going to talk about coming up right on that page at the slash 129. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life news. All right, back on the Knife Junkie podcast, episode number 129, our midweek supplemental episode where we get to talk about uh, knife drops, knives in the news, uh, those kind of things. It's our Knife Life news segment. And uh, we're going to talk about Kaiser, Bob, the Kaiser Shard by Dink, Dink, uh, Dirk Pinkerton, if I can say that right. <laughs> Dirk Pinkerton. Sorry about that, Dirk. Yeah, we had Dirk on the show and he's got uh, he's got a very recognizable uh, design language and style. And uh, I find it very fetching. He does a lot of Warren Cliffs and you know me, I like Warren Cliffs. Well, anyway. A year and a half ago, or, or it, I should say SHOT Show 2019, they came out, uh, Kaiser showed a, a Pinkerton design called the Shard, and it was a small, uh, and that's like 2.3 inch bladed Warncliffe. It was S35EN, it was in a titanium handle, you know, frame lock and all that, the usual uh, setup. And then we never really saw much of it. And, uh, and I think it went back on the drawing board for a little while, and it's resurfaced now as a more budget-friendly version. And, I, and I'm looking at them right now, Jim. And we talked about them on Thursday Night Knives. They're really cool looking, I got to say. So they're very small. Uh, like I said, uh, 2.28 inches uh, in blade length. Um, but they look extremely capable. They're, they have small neutral handles. And they come in G10 liner lock with uh, N690 steel. And they just, uh, this, this yellow one, uh, it's got yellow G10 and uh, the black blade. 
I just keep looking at it, man. I, I, I see that in my future, in, in my very small knife collection. I like very small knives or big knives. Oh, you, you didn't mean a very small collection. You meant the <laughs> collection of very small knives. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I meant. My <laughs> sub collection of very small knives. Um, it, it's kind of in the line with the fire ant and the, um, what was that one? The other one, the rogue, I think it was called. Uh, but this is sort of the smallest of those three. And it just looks like a great little light, light thing. And actually, I, I like it better in this format, this sort of more budget friendly format than I do in the traditional S35VN titanium frame lock uh, version, even though I haven't held either one. It just, for me, makes more sense for this tiny little knife to be tiny and light as opposed to tiny and made of metal. Though I know Kaiser is very good at uh, sort of uh, hollowing out their handles and making everything very, or pocketing out the titanium, making them very light. But still, something about something about it seems like this is the format to go with. And well, obviously, Kaiser felt the same way. Well, I think the uh, Knife News story uh, indicated uh, no indication, no timeline on when it's actually going to come about. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of what happened with the other shard. So, you know, we yeah. shall see. I do like the yellow one, though, as you said. Uh, from the looks perspective, I like the looks of that one best. Yeah, yeah, with the black. And I have no yellow G10 in my collection. So, oh, well, you got So that's a gaping hole out. we can all see, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's a need, man. You got to fill that need. <laughs> all right. Uh, somebody you love talking about, Elijah Isham and uh, Best Tech. Got a larger version of the Reticulin. Yeah, the Reticulin. Uh, the Best Tech Reticulin came out, what, in 2018? And it's this really beautiful, uh, curvy organic you know it's an elijah isham it, it's got all of his design signatures but uh, it was just a small small knife so for those of us who like a larger knife they've come out with they meaning best tech and elijah isham have come out with a scaled up version of the reticulin uh this one's got instead of a two inch blade it's got a three and a quarter inch blade which is which is quite a scale up so 3.25 inches, three and a quarter inches is way more EDC friendly, if you ask me. You have, you know, we were talking about my collection of small blades, of very small blades. Those are um, good to drop in your pocket every once in a while, but something like a three and a quarter inch blade, you're going to clip to your pocket more often. So I, I feel like this is a very good move on their part. Plus, it's just a beautiful knife. And so to see more of it is uh, is the way to go. Uh, S35VN. Uh, they are, are going to have a Damascus uh, configuration as well. Um, you can get black coating, and that's all they've seen. We haven't seen pictures of it without, uh, you know, in a satin version. Uh, 3.6 ounces and sculpted titanium, you know, uh, pocket clip. It's it's all it's kind of like what you expect, but a nice bigger version. Yeah. Well, I was going to say the the weight definitely uh, is, is nice for me. I, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not much on the the big heavy knives, if you will. Right, right. And interesting thing when you look at this design, Jim, is that it it pretty much demands, it insists that you use the choil because there's so much material forward of the finger choil on the handle that A, it puts your 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 hands so far away from the cutting path, and B, it looks like your pinky and possibly ring finger might slip off the back. So it this design is sort of to me like the Sage 3 the Spyderco Sage 3. You can use it without the finger choil, but it, it looks like it would. it's built to be really grasped that way. So cool looking knife. And uh, I'd, I'd like to get one in hand, I got to say. Well, uh, again, no uh, release date or uh, price for the uh, reticulin medium, uh, as uh, the knife news story indicates. But uh, we'll definitely uh, keep our eyes open and our ears to the ground to see what we can find out and learn about. And uh, I'm sure that will be uh, something Bob wants to know about is uh, he will probably add this one to his uh, growing list of knives that uh, he wants to acquire at some point. And then feel guilty about. No, never feel guilty about. Well, I, Jim, you know what? I, I realized maybe this, maybe this whole acquisitive knife thing right now, maybe this is my midlife crisis, Jim. You know, my dad back in the 80s when everyone was flush, he bought wine and a, and a car, you know. So maybe for me, it's knives. Hmm. I just thought it was a product research for the show, the podcast <laughs> and Thursday Night Knives. And Dad, uh, that's a joke, of course. <laughs> All right. 
Hey, speaking of dad, we got to get him back on a uh, podcast sometime to tell a story on you. We do. We have to tell a story. Well, I don't want to hear a story about me. I want to hear a story about him <laughs> playing chess with the with the uh, with the knife maker. I think that's the next one. Ooh, that'll be interesting. Yeah. All right, we'll look forward to that. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. All right, back on the Knife Junkie podcast. Yes, folks, I know you're as happy as I am. We have heard about this Spartan Harsey folder, how Bob has got to get one, how he wants one, on and on and on. (laughs) Finally, this uh, past uh, week's Thursday, or was it this past Thursday or the week before? Anyway, somebody, I think it was Alex or somebody guilted you into like, just buy the damn thing. Yeah, Quit yeah. talking about it, and and so you did. Yeah, he basically said, "Pooper, get off the pot, Bob. I'm done, <laughs> I'm done listening to you about it." I was like, "Okay, good idea." And you did, and you got it. I did, I did, and um, I, I, I will. It's it's not an inexpensive knife, so I will, I will have to be making some arrangements, moving some things around. And yeah, yeah, I always say that, but but I have a little a little pile over here. That's a, it's not a pile. They're they're all very very nicely separated from one another. If you're a buyer, they're not scratching each other. But yes, I do have uh, some knives to get rid of to, to make up for this. Not only is it an inex- not an inexpensive knife, but it's it's one of those knives that you get in hand. And you're like, this is serious. I don't need all these all these other knives. Uh, this this knife is going to take care of me. But, you know, it's one of those uh, uh, first blushes of true love, Jim. You know what I mean? Where 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 everything is unrealistic and uh, every everything is 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 clouds and bunnies and, uh, well, <laughs> and rainbows. Well, I won't put you on. I won't put you on the spot to ask which knives you're going to sell. Maybe uh, when you finally you know decide that you're actually going to sell them instead of just talking about them, selling them. Maybe oh. uh, one of these Thursday night knives you can actually uh, you know show off a couple that you're going to sell or something like that. That's a good idea. And then that way it'll be documented. Yeah. <laughs> That, that that cut to the quick, Jim. That hurt I'm just sorry. a little bit. <laughs> All right. Well, tell tell us about the Spartan Harsey. So I picked up the uh, picked up. I got the uh, all titanium version. Meaning, well, they're all all titanium, but this is just the plain Janist Harsey folder you can get right now. They have a, a run of beautifully anodized and um, laser etched Harsey folders that they're selling at a premium. But I've always been a bigger fan of the sort of uh, planar look, uh, the just the sort of utilitarian look. So I got the one that's got just the straight up titanium handle, and it is beautifully stonewashed, and the blade is beautifully stonewashed. So right now I am learning how to try and sweep open the blade slowly with my thumb, but there's a bit of break in that's going into this right now. I put a little bit of a uh, pivot lube in there last night. I've been opening and closing, opening and closing. Uh, the thumb studs, which stand uh, slightly proud and are perfect, are still, I don't know if you noticed this, but when you first get a new thumb stud knife, sometimes the thumb studs feel just a little bit abrasive. And then eventually over time through your hands and going in and out of the pocket, even something like steel kind of, I don't know if it wears down a little bit, or if you're, you know, we've talked about this before. Every new knife is a new callus. If you become callous to it and you don't feel it or or what it is. But uh, right now, I, my thumbs are a little tender from overuse with this. Uh, but I found something very interesting about this knife, Jim. It's got the hallmarks of like a Sabenza and a uh, an XM18. But it is unlike an XM18. It's a little bit chunkier behind the edge. Uh, the blade is a is a saber ground, and uh, it 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 seemed to me a, a little bit more like an XM18, where it's a little bit chunkier behind the edge. But I was using this uh, during the great uh, cardboard massacre, where I was testing out the, uh, the 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 small knives I was talking about, the right. Kiridashi, the Finchley, or the Finch Runtley, and the and the Pete. And I busted out the the Spartan. And it actually did a great job on cardboard. Uh, I, I thought it was going to be more like a wedge going through that, but it was it was quite slicey, and and I, I haven't quite figured out why. Uh, I didn't give it any extra edge. I, I didn't you know do much to it at all before I started using it, but it worked great. And uh, I, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I'll take the good <laughs> performance, but I I bought this thinking of this more as a you know, tactical high speed, low drag adventure knife, you know, like I'll keep it in my pocket in case, in case the world collapses, but I'll use the Finch Runtley if I need to cut something. But, uh, 
not the case with this knife. This is an, seems to be an all-arounder. And uh, so I think I might have to have a special edge put on it. Wink, wink, you know what I mean? And uh, I'm very excited to have this. And, and I, I think it's going to get a lot of pocket time right. because it's really, in one turn, beautiful, but just a chunk. I mean, this thing is, it's not light and it is a, a brutal piece of kit. I don't know what else to say. Well, if you missed uh, the Knife Junkies unboxing video when he got the Spartan Harsey, which uh, if you follow along on the Knife Junkies YouTube channel, you know he doesn't do many unboxings, but uh, that was uh, one of the rare ones. You can catch that on the thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. And also, again, the uh, Thursday Night Knives of July 9th, uh, Bob shows off the Spartan Harsey and talks a little bit about it on that uh, that epic show as well. And uh, we'll try to get a, a picture for the show notes that uh, we can put in there. We also... Uh interviewed Bill Harsey and talked quite a bit about this knife. I can't remember what episode, Jim. Maybe that can go in the show notes too, but uh, uh, a great podcast. Bill Harsey is an amazing knife designer. I mean, his he's prolific and his work is beautiful and uh, companies that are lucky enough to work with him are psyched, believe me. But as a human being, what a great guy. I had such a great conversation with him and uh, well, I feel like I have great conversations with a lot of great people, but uh, Bill Harsey, I, I, I just, uh, it was a, he's a legend. So, right, right. Yeah. Good conversation. Great knife. Look forward to uh, hearing and seeing more about that. And speaking of uh, great knives, we uh, kind of touched on it earlier in the, uh, the opening part of the show when we talked about uh, niche designs and uh, three prototypes. Uh, uh, you want to kind of touch about that a little bit more as we uh, kind of yeah. end the show? Yeah. I just wanted to uh, uh, just kind of comment on, on how, excited I am to have prototypes in hand. I've mentioned this before on the show. I've I've never bought a prototype. You know, oftentimes you can buy prototypes uh, from makers. I've never bought one. I've never been given one to consider. And I've gotten three here in this package that uh, Nick from Niche Designs sent, Nick Rogers. And uh, very exciting to see the way the initial design which when you see it on paper, you should go to the niche design website, by the way, because he's got a great sort of breakdown mm -hmm. of of the beginning to end of the process or beginning to the current stage of the process. And you can see his initial line drawing for his initial prototype of these three prototypes. The very first one is a flipper. And then you can see how he refines it through the second one. He gets rid of the flipper. Uh, he gets rid of the there's a glass breaker on the pommel that looks cool, but is not comfortable, you know, in any way. And he gets rid of that, changes that. And then from the third prototype or second prototype to the third prototype, he makes some very important, subtle changes. It took me a second to figure it out. But in the third prototype, it is optimized for actual use. I mean, the exciting thing to me is that, uh, I mean, they're all optimized for actual use, Jim. I, I don't mean to say it like this, but the third part of the evolution is an actual evolution. It's a change for the better. and. Um, you know, when we talked to Mike Emler, he said he he used his prototype in the kitchen and in a pinch grip, this third prototype, he said it worked better than his kitchen knives uh, or better than knives. I should say better than knives that were created by Spiderco, the Spidey Chef and Leong Ma, the KUF uh, folders exclusively made for kitchen. He said this works way better. So I'm going to do videos of this. I'd love to have Nick Rogers on uh, the show uh, to to talk to him about the journey. And you know, I don't use that word lightly, Jim, uh, but it, it seems uh, like it makes sense in this, in this case, from the very first line drawing to this uh, third prototype, which is, I think what's going to go into production probably maybe with a tweak or two, I'm not sure. Uh, but Nick was uh, started off as a knife fan, you know, active in the forums and whatnot. And, uh, and now look at him, he's making these you know, having these awesome prototypes produced and sent all around to all these knife folk. You know, you can you can see a bunch of videos on this already out there. So I just think he went about it in the right way. You know, it's like market research, very important. And uh, he's done it right. Well, the uh, Kickstarter for the Ingress uh, just finished up. Uh, and, uh, you know, earlier in the week when I when I looked at it, still had a, a little ways to go on, on the goal. Uh, the fifty thousand dollar goal. Uh, so uh, you know, if you're listening to this podcast, obviously the the Kickstarter is has probably closed unless they extended it. Take a look and see. Yep. Yeah, just FYI. So uh, finally, uh, Kiridashi. Something you want to talk about that? Um, 
something yeah. Kiridashi and friends. That'll be yeah. interesting. <laughs> just, just a little anecdote, nothing more. I've been talking a lot about my little cold steel Kiridashi, and I love the Kiridashi just as a, uh, it, the Kiridashi is a traditional Japanese knife. And it's a utility knife, small, looks kind of like an X-Acto blade, actually, uh, with a chisel grind. And, you know, they they change shape. They look different uh, from model to model. Uh, but it's a very old traditional knife used for kind of woodwork and utility. And I made one uh, out of a scrap of 1095 a couple of years back. And, uh, you know, I gun blued it, gave it a, a purple handle and a, and a blue lanyard slash fob and it's a it's a neck knife you know i made a kydex sheath and uh it it works really well well dear friend of ours uh, across the street uh recently had a uh, had a a surgery a very very um very high stakes surgery and uh thank god he is on the mend and doing great now but uh before he went in uh, i know he was very nervous and i gave him uh i gave him the kiridashi uh, just as a token you know, because it looks pretty too. It's it's like a nice little thing to hold on to. I I put a mosaic pin in it, and it's just a nice little thing, even if you don't use it as a knife. And I just gave it to him, like I don't know, kind of like may this bring you strength through your ordeal. And uh, hopefully it did. Uh, but I was just talking to his wife uh, yesterday, and she said that she's been using the kiridashi all the time in the garden, and that's a huge mm-hmm. part of what the kiridashis were made for. You know, just little knives you have on you when you have to cut a flower or you have to carve a little piece of bamboo or whatever it is, you know. And so uh, just sort of intuitively, she gravitated towards that knife for the uh, for her gardening stuff, uh, for her gardening tasks. And I, I thought that was so cool. And uh, incidentally, uh, she is a pretty fancy architect. Fancy. what a, I, sh- I mean, accomplished. She's an accomplished <laughs> architect. And she was saying she was on a Zoom meeting with uh, her boss, and she had that around her neck. And he, <laughs> he and he asked, like, "Oh, that's an interesting piece of jewelry." And she and she didn't tell him what it was. She's like, Whip "Yeah, you know, like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly." So, you know, us artist types, we have weird weird jewelry. Anyway, I I just was tickled to to find that a the knife was getting used. It wasn't just a uh, you know a token of friendship. But it was actually being used in the in the way it was intended. All right, cool. Well, as we uh, kind of wrap up the show, we do want to uh, promote a couple of things. We've mentioned it uh, uh, before, but uh, just remind you again, Thursday Night Knives coming up tomorrow, Thursday, July 16th. That's at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, hopefully, it'll be a uh, another epic show. Uh, you can help make it epic by uh, by joining in. Just go to thenifejunkie.com slash join. That'll bring you right into the show, and uh, you can ask your question, show off a knife or whatever. But again, the first ever Knife Junkie Patreon giveaway will be Thursday, July 16th. Still time for you to get in and become a Gentleman Junkie supporter of The Knife Junkie. That's at thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon, thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. First knife giveaway Thursday, July 16th, and that will be the uh, the pattern. The third Thursday of every month on Thursday Night Knives will be the uh, Patreon knife giveaway. So uh, not sure if we'll start the show off with a bang and do that or maybe uh, maybe midway the show or toward the end. But uh, watch and uh, we'll figure it out on Thursday night. We'll probably close the close. You know, I'm, I'm going to have to put it through a random number generator. Then right. again, I could just probably pick it out of a hat because it's it's not like there's a huge number, but we'll put it through the the uh, random.org number well, generator or the thing. wheel. That yeah, we've we got the wheel thing we'll do. And uh, uh, oh, I'll probably we'll probably close it at 930 or 945 Eastern Standard Time. That's about the time I'm scrambling around getting the mic set up and everything. And uh, and Jim's like, where's Bob? <laughs> right. <laughs> so right around then uh, we'll close it and then we'll try and do that up front in the in sort of in the beginning and actually we're gonna have uh jimmy slash on that show i believe and mm-hmm. he's a cold steel guy i came across him because of his love of uh, large cold steels so it's it's actually pretty apropos all right cool hear what he has to say about the uh, cold steel knife that you're going to give away as well yeah all right and again don't forget uh, this coming sunday our interview show on the podcast uh bastian coves uh, going to be the the interviewee this coming sunday yeah uh what a cool guy bastian coves he's a he's a frenchman living right here in florida making incredible incredibly beautiful tactical knives uh many in the tradition of the the filipino martial arts but 
as a Frenchman, he studied Cors- Corsican knife fighting. I mean, how cool is that? And uh, and he has strong sort of lineage from Fred Perrin and uh, and and some others, and works closely with Doug Markaida and others, Fred Mastro, uh, luminaries of the martial arts world. And it was just great to talk to him and and show off my small collection of Bastinelli's to him. Like, look at what I have that you made. <laughs> He's so, like, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. right. <laughs> no, he was he was pretty psyched. <laughs> yeah, but I think maybe he felt I needed more in my collection. So if he wants to help me out with that, I'd be I'd be so psyched. <laughs> <laughs> He'll send you the link. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So a lot of good stuff uh, coming up on future podcasts. Uh, that's just the way we roll here on the Knife Junkie podcast, trying to bring you the best and the brightest and the up and comers, the knife reviewers, anybody involved in the uh, knife industry. Uh, we want to talk to them and hear their story and uh, help share news of their knife, their company, uh, whatever the case may be. The KnifeJunkie.com is where you'll find links to everything, the podcast, Thursday Night Knives our Knives for Sale page, our newsletter and uh, YouTube subscription uh, subscribe page, all that right at the knifejunkie.com. Bob, final word as we uh, end out this week's midweek supplemental. Just a huge thanks to everyone who listens, to everyone who watches the videos, everyone who watches Thursday Night Knives and participates. And of course, uh, to the patrons, thank you so much. Uh, this this experiment is uh, it's going well. I thank you so much for your generosity and uh, and to everyone who just spends their time with us. Thank you. Absolutely. Oh, oh, oh. And don't take dull for an answer. There you go. You snuck that one in on me. Yeah, I yeah, thought yeah, you I were going to say it and then like, whoa, he didn't. And then, boom, there it is. <laughs> so for Mr. Knife Junkie himself, Bob DeMarco, I'm the knife noob over here, Jim Person, thanking you so much, truly, for being with us on the Knife Junkie podcast. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.